this whole uh, conception of this show happened about six months ago. The process of making it has been three years, but there were three events that happened over since 2017. One was these two are my father's buildings, the Hall of Nation and Hindon River Mills. He engineered them, and they were one of the kinds in the world. And Hall of Nations was demolished. Then Hindon River Mills uh, went, and they were also part of my sort of identity. And uh, it's uh, so Hall of Nations I could only photograph, but Hindon River Mills I managed to start getting in material from the site. And then Saroshni Nagar happened as a very slow demolition uh, because of the environmental issues surrounding it. And I sort of was interested in that because I had done a lot of research intellectually uh, in undergrad and grad level on uh, government housing in Delhi. So the three buildings came together as this whole idea of the fact that the spirit is going away in front of our eyes and how do I sort of uh, bring together something which is very sort of distant, uh, Saroshi Nagar, and something which is very, very close and personal, which is my father's buildings. And the whole thinking about the period also, I realized that this period, which was about frugality, about e economy, was also a space of inspiration, a space of identity, where people with very little means managed to do much more than we can do right now because of the labor, because of the times. So it became that period which I call the idea of socialist modernity, which was defined and that's how the topic came up, that it's in memory of social modernity. This is uh, written by Amit Srivastav on the idea of building and building and the politics of demolition which came and how that contextualizes the show. So this is the first stop of the show, which is, which is the Hall of Nations. Uh, this was it was an overnight demolition that happened uh, by the government when the stay order, I think from the Supreme Court, was removed. And uh, we had no chance of even going close to the site and we were allowed to photograph it from a distance. So this is about my emotional journey because I was deeply upset about it. But as being uh, the son of the father whose building it was, uh, there's not much... There are not many ways you can show emotion unless it becomes too personal. And that's how this whole idea of this box happened, which was this, the idea of the megaphone where my voice is through my photographs, through my practice that I'm doing. And surrounding them are the uh, drawings of my father's and the construction process that happened because it's also a homage to all the laborers, the contractor, the architect, everyone who sort of put in this effort which is one of a kind in the whole century to create this building and you actually go inside and see the photograph of the demolition this was a hindon river mills i heard about the i heard about the demolition of this site or the, the fact the building was almost abolished uh, but we knew, knew the uh, party and my father knew the person. So I told my father that I want to go and see the site. So I was allowed to the site. And when I went there, I started collecting all the raw material, all the steel uh, that created the structure, the important parts of the... Uh, so those were the tensile rods. These were the, the springs which uh, sort of created the tension, the reinforcement. And I started collecting and bringing it back home, wondering how I'm going to use it, but I was going to use it. And so the whole idea sort of came together where I start with the, um, the initial conception which my father had uh, for the building. And I grew up with this drawing where he sort of showed uh, how enlarging the span was actually cheaper and more economical and a better way of constructing uh, than having a column in the middle. And he created this diagram for the client. And so this, along with a very close friend of his, uh, Stella Sneed, who photographed this building and created these timeless photographs, which I again grew up with. Uh, and the construction process became the center around which I was photographing all the remnants of the site, which were these columns, which remained. And this was this 48 meter span of the building and it was like this elegant building of arches that happened this is 
what I call the invisible invisible heroes. These are the so my father was <coughs> a fan of Nervi, who was an eminent engineer, who spoke about how reinforcement and steel has to be like the nervous system uh, in the face of concrete. It's like the nervous system and concrete is the skin. So this is a homage to that, where this is the reinforcement and the stirrups, which created the tension, which created those spans, are part of this whole uh, space. And the I call that preserving the emperor because that was the main uh, element of the structure, which was the, uh, the ties which anchored the arches on the two ends. So that is sort of almost like a mummification of the emperor. And that's what this whole process is. This is again a drawing of my father's where I sort of superimposed it with uh, uh, photographs of the columns which are emerging out from the ground. So this was the whole detail of the column and how the reinforcement comes down and these are the plans of the columns and then sort of their resonance in what lies today. And again, the, the quiet muted anger that I had towards its demolition manifests in these megaphones and uh, where the building was built by these columns which were twin columns, they were two of each and uh, there were 10 bays. So sort of I went through the site and recorded each bay and the two columns, which were 3.5 meters away and sort of created this whole sort of, uh, sort of installation, which are 10 of them, which sort of almost uh, relies the building in imagination. So again, you go through it and you see it, you engage with it as you go in. These are photographs of the building what was remaining of the building stood two ends and again this is Telas Needs photograph of what the original building was and I sort of superimposed it as a frozen memory that happens again I was very attached to these uh, photographs because my mother had created this beautiful brochure for my father in black and white just a quote here and uh, so I used to see it every day this is the final part of the a uh, homage uh, where this was the only remaining structure, which was that one remaining where these gutters were still standing. And even though <clears throat> they are gutters, they were structurally very important because they held the building together from earth and protected from earthquakes. So this is the final homage here. From here, we come to Sarojini Nagar. Sarojini Nagar was really an intellectual exercise. It started as a curiosity because I'd done so much research and I started photographing it, you know, during COVID. And uh, this was the first photographs I took, which was uh, the whole idea of the, the anonymous civil society and the idea of numerically uh, sort, of, uh, sort of creating situations for people to live in. And I was very intrigued by this numbering. And that's how it started the photography journey for Saroshni Nagar. And, uh, and the whole idea of the state being this welfare development state, which took a stand of socialism, took a stand on secularism, but actually it also sort of uh, dehumanized a bit uh, the civil society. So this is how it started. And I found records, government records of how they sort of used to attribute numbers to people and not the surname, it's just name. So sort of this comes together and slowly the demolition started and I, because Roshin Nagar was a very slow demolition, I had the chance to keep going back and recording demolition at different stages. And this, I also, I acquired from another site, construction site, uh, plywood, and that became my sort of frame. And this, this whole uh, series is called Aspirations and Erasure. Aspirations in the sense, the whole idea of capital and modernity is uh, what makes us aspire for a better life or you know better cities higher dense cities and everything and consequential or to that whole aspiration is erasure so this is uh, so these houses are really about our own personal aspirations of a better life of a better house of a more luxurious experience of life 
and there is there are consequences to that so this is that then out here while i was in sarojinagar i was pretty intrigued by also the type of plaster that was coming out the colors people used in their houses something that i'd never seen the the blue the reds the maroons the yellows the greens purples magentas there were colors from all over in this very sort of anonymous facades within that there was this whole life and so this is called plat uh, platters of lived spaces the memories even though it's a abstract collective we don't know who lived there and who it belonged to but it's there are memories in these it's also the time zomato was coming up and this whole fast food culture was coming up so this whole idea of recycling housing and erasing and rebuilding sort of created this whole space this is a triptych of the act of demolition happening in front of me so it's sort of it was a, just a recording of that that happened and then i come to the final one where what i call these as viewing voids the sort of the spaces where i went into the houses for the first time and started seeing them for their colors for the way people sort of used to live or imagine how they used to live and so that's what this is it's 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 like literally being a warrior going inside and seeing the the use of color and how they were working with it mm -hmm.